Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christina. Uh, you can also call me Radix Verum, which is obviously the name of the channel. And today we're going to talk about 10 signs of a recession, but also what you can do to prepare for that. Um, before we get into, uh, I think, what a recession is, it's important to point out that there are many uh, investors and analysts right now who are already saying that we are in a recession. Um, famous investor and analyst Michael Burry, who predicted the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis, has referred to this as the bubble of all bubbles. He's made a number of uh, predictions and statements on his Twitter account, but Mr. Burry is kind of famous for deleting his tweets right away. But I do have those in an article uh, up on my Substack, which will be linked in the video description, and uh, you'll be able to read it there. Um, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon, has made uh, a statement that, you know, we are, we're seeing this big recession coming. I think he referred to it as a hurricane. And on that front, uh, what degree of difficulty do you attach to the task at hand in front of the Fed right now? And you mentioned storm clouds. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to change about. the storm clouds. because I said, I said there are three things that we're going through, which are, I hate the word unprecedented, which are kind of unprecedented. And you got to put this in the back of your mind when you haven't, when you've seen things that have never happened before, then you have to question your ability to predict, okay? One is huge growth in this country driven by fiscal and monetary stimulation. That isn't a normal recovery, okay? And that, that fiscal stimulation is still in the pocketbooks of consumers, they're spending it, they're spending it at very strong levels. For, and the data is completely distorted. It's distorted by inflation, it's distorted by, they went from goods back to services, it's distorted by all these things, but jobs are plentiful, wages are going up, Consumers are spending, the, the lower income folks, not quite as much as before, but everybody else, it looks like they have $2 trillion more savings rate drop. I don't think that's going to stop the spending the six or nine months. Um, and also a uh, famous investor, Ray Dalio from Bridgewater Associates has also made very similar claims that people aren't really prepared for what's coming. Robert Kiyosaki has made similar statements, and I think that everybody is able to see how the economy is affecting them personally, whether it's uh, rising uh, costs of food and gas um, or lack of work, the uh, fact that wages are not growing um, in line with inflation, so the cost of living continues to go up while people's wages remain stagnant. And so I think that uh, it is very important to consider what this means for you and your family. So first of all, let's define a recession. Uh, according to Investopedia, a recession is a macroeconomic term that refers to a significant decline in general economic activity in a designated region. It had been typically recognized as two consecutive quarters of economic decline as reflected by GDP in conjunction with monthly indicators such as a rise in unemployment. So that's a, just a general overview of what a recession is. We've had many of them in the United States, uh, probably about 48 of them. Um, you know, I think a lot of people see them as cycles, and I think that's fair. Uh, I think that the most notable ones that, you know, people or maybe my age or younger might be familiar with was the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis, the dot-com bubble. Um, and I think that right now... <laughs> We're in sort of an everything bubble, as Mr. Burry said. Um, I had made some predictions, actually. Back in December of 2020, I made my economic predi predictions for the following year for what I thought was going to happen in 2021. And what I forecasted was hyperinflation, um, supply chain chaos and disruption, uh, civil unrest, um, and a, a couple other things that um, did not really, well, some of them happened in 2021, but I think a lot of that stuff is happening now. And so, so sometimes I tend to be like a year, uh, a year or two ahead in my predictions, which is interesting. But um, what are some signs of a recession and some that are happening 
now, right? Uh, the first one, one would be layoffs. Um, we've already seen that this has started uh, in a big way in the beginning of 2022. Uh, some of the major FANG companies, that is Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, the main big tech companies, they actually account for, I think, 20% of the entire US stock market, which is shocking uh, in and of itself when you think about it. But they have... Um, begun laying off employees and the ones that haven't started layoffs have initiated a hiring freeze so they're no longer hiring new employees uh, two days ago business insider reported on a major student loan company uh, laying off employees and how this sparked like a panic um, a major student loan company let go of about 150 workers last month but said it's not planning to lay off anymore uh, this is a company called nelnet and um, they were, you know, claiming that they thought that Joe Biden was going to forgive portions of student loans in the coming month and that that would impact their industry. There would be a decline in the industry and something that they wanted to prepare for. Now, personally, I don't think this student loan forgiveness is going to happen. Um, I think that the student loan industry, as well as higher education in general, has been a bubble for a very long time. I think if you look at the value of college degrees these days, uh, they're not worth the insane costs of tuition. That has gone up dramatically, but also the interest that student loans are charging. So I know young people um, people my age, for uh, those of you who aren't aware, I'm in my early 30s. I know people who went to school for years of their life that got degrees and have had to take jobs, you know, that didn't really require a degree or where they're making significantly less than they thought they were going to make. And they have thousands and thousands of dollars of student loan debt that they have to pay off. Student loan debt, as you guys know, you cannot get a bankruptcy and have that removed. That debt is with you forever. So... Um, you know, when I was young, I was, I had to drop out of high school and I was homeless for a while. I do not regret that time of my life. I think it was one of the most significant events in shaping the kind of person that I am. And one of the things I learned when I was 17 years old and I was working at real estate companies and I was working at law firms is that many people who I talked to that became entrepreneurs and very successful, they all told me that college was a scam. So that's just something to keep in mind. A uh, Remax, a large um, nationwide real estate company, they have announced layoffs. They're calling it a quote unquote shift in strategy. So that will begin in 2023. Um, several crypto companies have begun mass layoffs. Um, some companies that have started this is Coinbase, Compass, Redfin, BlockFi, Tesla, Desktop Metal, Warner Brothers Discovery. So uh, you have to remember that these layoffs are coming at a time of increased rising cost of living. Um, other companies laying off people, White Hat Jr., Spotify, all of AI, Netflix, Vald, OneTrust, FairEye, CVS Health, TomTom, StartTech, Laceworks, BBC4, and CBBC, Uber, Bolt Financial, Meta, which is Facebook, AliExpress, Carvana, Ford, Robinhood, Noom, Condé Nast, Jay Sansbury, PLC, Baidu, Nestle, Unilever, Zillow, ByteDance, which is the parent company of TikTok, and more. So these mass layoffs and hiring freezes are a major indicator of a coming recession. Now, the second sign is supply chains. Supply chain problems have been an ongoing issue for a while now that sort of began um, with the under the Trump administration with the US China trade wars. And that was exacerbated by the global pandemic. Now we have the Russia-Ukraine conflict, which has caused even more problems with global supply chains that still hadn't recovered from the pandemic. And as if that wasn't enough, China started new lockdowns. And that has added even more pressure to an already fragile supply chain. So that's something that is definitely leading to... Uh, 
disruptions, supply chain disruptions. This is disturbing businesses and the flow of goods because we now live in a globalized world. Globalization provided the ability for us to be more connected than ever, to grow and expand businesses and to ship to all over the world and outsource. Um, but at the same time, it created this interdependency, this enmeshment of countries, nations, people dependent on other countries. And when supply chains are fractured and you have, you know, these geopolitical issues, it creates a lot of risk and uncertainty in the ability to get goods and services and to transport them quickly like they used to be. So um, there's something called the Global Supply Chain Pressure Index. And that, the latest report from that has indicated uh, continued problems um, from the New York Fed. They say, quote, supply chain disruptions continue to be a major challenge as the world economy recovers from the COVID pandemic. Furthermore, recent developments related to geopolitics and the pandemic could put further strains on global supply chains. Um, now, another sign of a recession is the fact that Americans are relying more and more on credit cards. Uh, consumers relying more on credit cards than ever before. Just last month, at the end of June 2022, uh, June 29th, USA Today reported, quote, as Americans grapple with the highest inflation in 40 years, the number of new credit cards has surged as more Americans rely on them to keep up with high prices. According to a recent report from the Federal Reserve, revolving credit, so that's credit cards and lines of credit, have increased by 19.6% from the previous year to $1.103 trillion. That's trillion with a T. This number is an all-time high breaking the pre-COVID record of $1.092 trillion in 2019. So that is insane. That is massive. According to a survey from Equifax, Americans received 11.5 million new bank credit cards through February of 2022. So that is a 31.4% increase from the previous year which by the way, was right after the pandemic when a lot of small businesses were having problems, a lot of uh, American households were having problems. So that's something major. The total limit for these credit cards were $55.5 billion. That is a 59.2% increase from the previous year. So the total credit limits now stand at $4.12 trillion. That is over $200 billion above pre-pandemic levels. So that is massive. Right now, uh, credit card debt currently sits at $841 billion. So credit cards have now overtaken debit card payments as how Americans are paying for things. That shifted from 2021 to 2022. So in just that a little bit of time, that's what's happening. And that is very, very disturbing. And another really strange thing that was happening and that was also concerning was that the Americans were surveyed. There was a survey done by um, uh, Sesame Credit that showed that um, one in six surveyed did not even know their own credit score. So Americans have like severe financial illiteracy. 40% didn't realize that lenders utilize credit scores to evaluate their credit worthiness. So they're, they just have, they're totally uneducated about this stuff. But also, banks were not checking when they're giving credit to people to make sure that these people are financially able to pay it back. So Americans are already heavily indebted and they're already very economically illiterate because American schools do not teach you uh, like how to manage a checkbook. They don't teach you any of this stuff. And they're now taking on even more major credit card debt with lenders not even borrowing, even bothering to evaluate their ability to pay that debt back. Another sign of a recession is GDP reports. So as we uh, discussed earlier, it is generally believed two quarters in a row. So 
Two quarters in a row, GDP is an indication of a recession. Just last month, Washington Examiner reported, quote, the economy will shrink for a second consecutive quarter, a regional Federal Reserve Bank projected Thursday in the latest sign of recessionary risk. Gross domestic product or GDP growth will fall to a negative 1% annual rate. The Atlanta Fed's GDP Now tracker said in an update, the economy contracted at a 1.6% annual rate in the first quarter. Thursday's update was the first to show an economic contraction for the second quarter based on unexpectedly weak reports on consumer spending and business investment. So it appears that we're already in the early stages of a recession. Uh, according to Fidelity Investments' website, two quarters of consecutive GDP contraction is the standard shorthand for a recession, which does technically mean that the U.S. economy has entered the beginning of a recession. The National Bureau of Economic Research defines a recession as a significant decline in economic activity spread across the entire economy, lasting more than a few months that is normally visible in production, employment, real income, and other indicators. So something to watch and pay attention for is the GDP report for next quarter. Now, moving on, another sign of a recession is the yield curve. That has been a very good indication of a recession um, for a very long time now. Most economists will tell you there might be no sign of a pending recession more reliable than the inversion of the yield curve. Of course, it doesn't help. They seem to be the only ones who really understand what an inverted yield curve actually is. But the yield curve refers to uh, a graph of the interest rates on treasuries, government debt of varying lengths. Money lent for longer periods of time normally has a higher rate to reflect the increased risk. So the graph usually slopes from lower rates for short-term debt to higher rates for more long-term debt. So while the ins and outs of the uh, market for government debt can be very difficult to comprehend, it plays a major role in the American economy. And moreover, the reliability of that indicator is pretty much unparalleled to any other indicator in the eyes of economists. So every recession in the past century has seen that yield curve invert prior to a downturn in growth. So that's been something that is closely watched. So you might be asking, where is the yield curve right now? Well, on July 5th, Reuters reported, quote, a closely watched part of the U.S. Treasury yield curve inverted again on Thursday as investors continue to price in the chance that the Federal Reserve's aggressive move to bring down inflation will push the economy into a recession. Yields on two-year treasuries uh, briefly rose above those of the 10-year treasury for the third time this year, a phenomenon known as a yield curve inversion that has in the past preceded U.S. recessions. So there's another indicator. Um, another uh, indicator of a recession is declining real income. So according to Investopedia, real income is defined as how much money an individual or an entity makes after accounting for inflation. It's sometimes called like a real wage when you're referring to an individual's income. So how you adjust that income with inflation is the real income or real wage. Uh, individuals often closely track their nominal versus real income to have an understanding of what their actual purchasing power is. So basically, real income is the real wage that you're earning after you adjust for inflation. As inflation is rising, real income and purchasing power fall by the amount of that inflation. So um, real income has been continuing to decline. Inflation adjusted real disposable income declined for the 10th time in 11 months in February of just this year, 2022, and this trend has continued. So basically, 
the pay the average pay for the average American citizen is not keeping up with inflation and we're now seeing negative wage growth. Another sign of a recession is rising unemployment. According to Market Watch, quote, some 235,000 people applied for jobless benefits last week, marking the highest number in six months and possibly signaling that layoffs are on the rise as the economy slows. Economists poll by the Wall Street Journal forecast initial jobless claims uh, to total 230,000 in the seven days that ended July 2nd. New filings had fallen to as low as 166,000 in late March, the second fewest on record before moving higher over the past several months. The four-week average of new jobless claims, which smooths out temporary ups and downs, rose 232,500, the highest level since January. So another thing to keep in mind is people who are already phased out of the job market are not being counted in those numbers. They're not applying for unemployment anymore. You know, a lot of people, their jobs were just uh, made obsolete and they are simply no longer part of, they're not looking for jobs anymore. They're not even trying. They're not even applying for unemployment benefits. So right now, according to the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, unemployment sits at 3.6%. So that's pretty, it's not good. Another indication of a recession is home prices, housing prices and sales declining. Single family home sales are a reliable indicator of housing market strengths. New and existing home sales rates have declined in all four census regions. Based on previous cycles, the recent downturn in U.S. home sales is consistent with a broader economic slowdown that is coming from the St. Louis Fed. Another sign of a recession is a stock market crash. Um, major, major sign of a recession um, Business Insider says, quote, the hottest debate on Wall Street right now is whether or not the economy will enter a recession in the months ahead. Cons consumer spending, the driving force behind about two thirds of the economy, is starting to slow down as the highest inflation rate in four decades hits budgets and the Federal Reserve hikes interest rates to cool demand. Indeed, stocks are currently down 40%. Um, and if you look overall uh, at the one year, the S&P is down uh, up almost 19%. So that is year to date market decline, 19% of the S&P. Now, another sign of a recession is Americans living paycheck to paycheck. At the end of June of this year, Consumer Affairs reported on this number just continuing to rise. Quote, consumers who spend all of their money between paydays are in good company. A survey by payments shows that 61%, so over half of U.S. consumers are living paycheck to paycheck in April, 9% more than just last year of April of 2021. And this is uh, even more disturbing. Even more affluent Americans have little to nothing left over when their next paycheck arrives. The data shows that slightly more than one in three people earning $250,000 a year or more are currently living paycheck to paycheck. So that's uh, pretty crazy when you think about it. There, I. It's sort of like, I think, perhaps people living beyond their means, right? Um, yeah. So these are people that typically have higher credit scores and um, are, you know, should be more responsible with their money. They're still living paycheck to paycheck as well. And so that is pretty crazy. Um, so living paycheck to paycheck appears to be a lifestyle choice for those people. If, if they have money, they're simply spending it and they're spending it on non-essential items. So that's something that has to change. They're not actually saving money. Um, that's wild. So when you consider that well-to-do Americans who are making over six figures are still living paycheck to paycheck and have absolutely nothing saved, this is now two-thirds of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. So, you know, 
these all look really bad, right? All, all the things we've just gone over, 10 signs that yes, we're entering a recession. Um, you know, it, I think people tend to think of recessions as this is a bad thing, right? You know, we saw what happened during the subprime mortgage crisis with a lot of people losing everything, families losing everything, uh, businesses going out of business. I mean, how Lehman Brothers, who were like a staple uh, on Wall Street, went under in a very, very quick amount of time. Uh, AIG almost went out of business. Uh, Merrill Lynch was acquired by Bank of America. So there's a lot. It, there were so many people that lost their homes whose homes were foreclosed on. So yes, there's going to be a lot of people losing stuff. And it tends to be the lower income to middle class Americans. The rich always get richer during this time. But I would encourage people not to think of recessions as an inherently bad thing. Um, this is a necessary thing. The market has to be allowed to correct itself. Recessions also can be times of tremendous opportunity for people um, who are aware of it and know how to take advantage of that. There are many people who have profited during economic downturns. So here are some things that you and your family can do to prepare for the recession that is very clearly coming, needs to happen. Um, you know, we've all heard too big to fail, right? We've seen how the government has intervened to try to save companies, bail out companies that should not have been allowed to stay in business, that made bad decisions. And it's like delaying consequences for bad decisions. No, no, no. When you make a bad decision, when you do something wrong, you need to have the consequence immediately. So it, it serves as a, a warning to other people that if you want to do something wrong like that, you're, this is what's going to happen to you. But when people see, oh, if I do this, the government will just step in and bail us out, they think they can get away with anything. And it actually emboldens them. And I think that that's what's happened since 2008 to 2010. So something you can do to help prepare yourself and your family for the tough times that are absolutely going to be coming. It might not be this year. It might be next year. It might be one year later, but we know they're going to come eventually. What goes up has to come down. That's just how it works. So the first thing you can do is assess your financial risk. Look closely at your own personal finances and risks and see if you can take action to correct it now. For example, one of the risks could be your current location. Is this the place you want to be if things go south and uh, shit hits the fan? Is this location safe for your family? Are you close to natural resources, etc.? When you start looking at your financial risk, make sure that you're doing so in terms of inflation adjusted rates, not today's dollars, because that is liable to change and change quickly. Another thing you can do is have a savings account. This is so important, and it's something that so many people have forgotten. If you can, start saving money now, even if it's just a small amount of money, like a few dollars. It all adds up over time. If you are invested, make sure you have a safe, well-diversified portfolio. Could you survive financially if you lost your job? That is something to think about. How long could you live off your savings? What's the worst case scenario? And how can you make sure that that doesn't happen to you? You know, one of the things that I have read uh, is that by it's recommended that by age 30 you have a full year salary in your savings account and i know that many of you listening to this myself included are not prepared for that i do not have an entire year's worth of salary saved and i'm sure many people like myself are in that situation but you can always start now um you, know, you can look into uh, if your if you your company doesn't offer a retirement like a, a 401k, look into opening a Roth IRA, something that will be tax free money. You can save as little as five dollars a day. That's a co a cup of coffee each day that you you can cut out. Um, if that's too much, you can even do as as little as twenty dollars a week. Regardless, whatever it is, 
you can open one of these accounts. You can get a Roth IRA at Fidelity for, you can open one up for as little as a dollar. Start putting money in there and start saving some money. You need to have a savings, you know? And it's not always good to have it in cash because of inflation and at least you can earn some interest on that. Uh, don't keep all of your money in one place. And I'm sure you guys have all heard the phrase like, don't keep all of your eggs in one basket. This applies to your finances as well. Don't have all of your money like in one stock or one company, whatever. Have varied investments. Make sure that you invest in some physical hard assets like gold or real estate. You could even, if you want to, uh, invest in digital assets like crypto, but please make sure that you Dior, do your own research <laughs> before you make these investments. Um, and it also should be noted that I am not giving anybody uh, financial advice. I'm giving um, things that I have learned and read that information I want to share with you. You're all responsible for doing your own research and making sure that you are aware of all the risks before you invest. And I will personally say about crypto that I think it's speculative and volatile. It is not something that I would want to invest a lot of money in. It is something that I'd be interested in investing some in, but just understand that it's incredibly speculative. Um, another thing you can do to help prepare is get rid of your credit card debt, please. If you haven't done this already, I can't stress this enough. If you have credit card debt, start working now to pay off that debt. With a recession on the way, interest rates are going to be going up rapidly. You do not want to have to deal with that during a time of uncertainty. Um, Matt Schultz from Lending Tree has recommended if you have debt, you want to quickly pay that off. You could take out a low interest personal loan to pay off your credit card debt if it has a higher interest rate. He also recommends calling your credit issuers and asking for a rate reduction. This is something so many people don't bother doing. They don't even try, but you can take advantage of stuff like that. You can try to renegotiate interest rates. You could also try to negotiate settlements to settle your debt for a lower number than what you owe. Say you owe $6,000 on a credit card. You call them and you make an offer. Hey, I can pay $4,000 to settle this thing. Will you settle? They might say yes, just to get rid of that and to, to know that they're going to get a payment. So that is something to really consider. Another thing you can do is establish an emergency fund separate from a savings account. This is not the same as your savings. You need to have an emergency fund in case you lose your job. So you the savings that you have that is for monthly bills like in the event you lose your job and you need to have you know six months worth of salary to be able to pay your bills in the meantime that is not the same as a medical emergency right the emergency fund is something you'll need in the event of a medical emergency like something that requires surgery or medications that will go beyond your monthly bill so you want your emergency fund to be separate from your savings account Another thing you can do, and you can do this right now, is to get a side hustle. Every single one of you guys listening to this video right now, um, you have something that you're good at, right? Like every single one of you has one thing that you can do that maybe other people can't do. You have some kind of skill or some kind of talent that you can develop and turn into something that is more than a hobby, whether that be making YouTube videos or making homemade teas or something like that. There's something you can do that you can potentially monetize. Uh, finally, I recommend joining a local group. This I think is so important and it might be something that you wouldn't initially think of when you're thinking, how do I prepare for a coming recession or a, um, you know, shit hits the fan type event. Look into joining a local group in your community geared toward things like prepping and self-defense. Those kinds of communities, you're going to meet like-minded people there. You're going to meet people who, in the event of a, something bad happening, these are the people you're going to want to know. People who are prepping, people who are prepared, that have the ability to defend themselves and others. 
So there's always safety in numbers. And the more people that you know in your area, the more potential resources you're gonna have at your disposal in the event of some kind of emergency. You, if you know someone who is maybe a nurse or a doctor in your community and part of you know one of these local groups, and you have an unexpected medical medical emergency or something, you can reach out for them and ask them for help instead of going to a hospital and having a hospital bill. Maybe you can negotiate a way to pay them that doesn't require cash up front. Perhaps you agree to do something in exchange for them right? Like working on their house or something like that. Bartering will always come in handy. So ultimately, your goal is to create a strong local group that can come together and pull resources during times of hardships. You know, you want somebody that's good at maybe an electrician, right? Maybe a nurse, maybe somebody that's good at dental work, whatever. You want to have a variety of people in your little local group and people who are all kind of on the same page when it comes to this stuff where you can all kind of agree to help each other out. So to conclude this video, According to all metrics, it does look like we are headed for a recession and things are probably going to get worse before they get better. You know, it's impossible to know how bad it's going to get and how long a recession will last. I think if the subprime mortgage crisis is any indication, we could be looking at a major collapse with people facing joblessness, eviction, and homelessness. You know, we've seen crazy things going on right now with the housing market because of um, major financial firms like BlackRock coming in and buying up single family homes and then jacking rents to 40% and basically pricing people completely out of the housing market. So that's something that is not a good thing. Basically, you don't want to be in a bad position when things go south. You want to make sure you start preparing yourself and your family now. Uh, there are always people who are able to take advantage of an economic downturn and can turn a profit. So another thing that you can do is learn to start living more frugally in anticipation of this. You know, you can start by looking over your finances and canceling things that are just unnecessary, like subscription services. Do you really need Netflix, right, or Hulu, whatever it is? Um, do you really need to get a fancy coffee on the way to work every day? Do you really need to eat out or could you start cooking more at home? That is a major way to save money. Also, learn things like gardening. Even if you don't have a lot of, you know, a big yard or a lot of space, you can still grow some things and that will also help you and learn to in, learn to do things like canning. That's something I'm trying to learn right now, how to can and save food uh, for, you know, use later on. Another thing to do is look into buying maybe animals, right? Small animals. If you do have some land and you're lucky enough to have that, look into buying chickens or something like that. Some kind of animal that produces food like eggs or a small cow that can produce milk, whatever. Develop a savings and start looking at ways you can monetize your skills and turn that into some kind of side gig. Finally, just pay attention to what's going on. Make sure that you're prepared. Make sure you're aware of everything that's going on and that your family is so that when things get really bad, you'll be in a decent position and just start networking with like-minded people. Create that community so that when that does happen, everybody can be there for each other and kind of pull together. So I don't really have anything else to add to this. This is a lot longer than I wanted it to be. So I appreciate everybody tuning in and listening to this video. If you can, please do me a favor, make sure to like and subscribe and share the video. My channel is usually demonetized and buried. So Anytime you hit the like button or leave a comment or share it, it really does help. And I'm, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has listened, that stayed and listened all the way through this video. I know it was very long and tedious, 
But I do that stuff for a reason. It's because I have a lot of information that I want to share with people and I want to give details, not just gloss over things. So I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to my channel and become part of the family here. The community here continues to grow and I love hearing from you guys. I like getting your comments and getting to know you and I think that's really, really fun. It's been really cool kind of just seeing a community form around my channel. I never thought that that would happen. So hopefully our goal is to get at least 300 likes on the video and we want to get up to 5,000 subscribers, I would say in the next two months. <laughs> hopefully that's not asking too much. Ring!